With an over 40 year career and 14 studio albums, rock and roll hall of famer Jackson Brown is truly deserving of his title of legend. Not only has he influenced countless artists both past and present, his writing partnerships and friendships with the likes of the Eagles, Bruce Springsteen, Crosby, Stills and Nash have meant he has made a huge impact on music. To celebrate his return to the UK for a 2017 tour, we take a closer look at the singer, songwriter and activist. I'm Ash Robertson from Man Thoughts, and this is 10 things you didn't know about Jackson Brown. Number 10, he has appeared in The Simpsons. Not many TV shows can boast the longevity and success of The Simpsons. They've been on our TV screens for almost three decades, and their success comes down to their strong, funny characters, the brilliant writing, and their big name celebrity guest stars. Jackson Brown joined the list of stars, including Elton John, Paul McCartney and Mick Jagger to feature on The Simpsons when he guest starred on a 2003 episode. Brown was drafted in by Homer who was throwing his wife Marge a banquet in an attempt to win her back. After rewriting Brown's hit Rosie and winning back his girl, Jackson Brown joined the elite group of Simpsons guest stars. Number 9. He performed as the Scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz. As well as a strong reputation as a skilled singer and songwriter, Jackson Brown is known for his charity work supporting the arts and children's charities. In a special musical performance of the hit film The Wizard of Oz in 1995, Jackson joined Roger Daltrey and Tim Allen and other stars as the Scarecrow to raise money for the Children's Defence Fund. Number 8. His song featured on the Friends pilot episode. Back in 1994, many wouldn't have predicted that the new show called Friends would quickly become the biggest sitcom on TV, with a global audience creating mega-celebrities out of all of their fresh-faced stars. 1994 also saw the return of Jackson Brown and the release of his critically acclaimed I'm Alive album. In the first pilot episode of Friends, the song Sky Blue and Black from Jackson's new album featured on the episode, securing airtime across the world for many years to come, as the success of Friends grew, as did the demand for reruns and DVD box sets of the sitcom. Number seven, he sued John McCain and the Republican Party. Using popular songs has always been a tool politicians use, especially when it comes to campaigns, providing a call to action or the anthem for their political message. However, John McCain's use of running on empty in an advert during his 2008 campaign for presidency highlighted the need to secure the artist's consent first. Jackson Brown, who endorsed Barack Obama for president, was outraged at the use by McCain and started legal action against him and the Republican Party. The matter was later settled out of court with damages and an apology agreed. Number six, he lives completely off the grid. Political and environmental activism has been an important part of Jackson Brown's life and later his music. His support for the environment has been influencing his music for many years, including on his latest album highlighting the need to reduce our dependency on plastic. It's not a soundbite or the way to win the green vote, but very much a key focus of the singer-songwriter. It was shown during a TV show hosted by Egg Bagley Jr where the viewers were shown on a guided tour of Jackson Brown's California Ranch, where the environment and green living is the key priority. Using an on-site wind farm, solar panels and other eco-technology, Brown is able to live completely off the grid and support the message he sings in his material. Number five, high praise for his latest album. Jackson Brown's 2014 release, Standing in the Breach, marked his first album in six years and was met with critical acclaim. Whilst many artists of his ilk are generally looking back, Jackson Brown is not only creating new, original material, he is singing about current topics such as climate change, the Haitian earthquake and the universal feeling of love and loss. Standing in Breach was recognised in the top 50 albums of the year by Rolling Stone, ranking higher in the list than offerings from Tom Petty, Leonard Cohen and Prince to name a few. Number 4. He helped to relaunch Warren Zevon's career. Disenchanted at the failure of his first album, Wanted Dead or Alive, Warren Zevon was ready to leave America behind and head to the Son of Spain. However, seeing his talent and potential, Jackson Brown convinced the singer-songwriter to stay in the States and helped to produce his self-titled album, which marked his true arrival. The album was not only a success, but truly highlighted the sheer talent of Warren Zevon as one of the best American songwriters. Their relationship would continue with Jackson producing his highly successful Excitable Boy album, which yielded the mega hit Werewolves of London and a number of shared bills and musical collaborations. 
Their friendship would continue until Zevon's untimely death in 2003. Jackson still performs Zevon songs in sets across the world, continuing the legacy of The Offender. Number three, his songs are featured on the silver screen. As well as TV appearances and plays on popular shows, Jackson Brown's music is also featured in many iconic films. Running on Empty was used in the 1994 Oscar-winning picture Forrest Gump, during the famous running scene. His magnificent song Late for the Sky also featured on Martin Scorsese's legendary 1976 film Taxi Driver, starring Robert De Niro and Jodie Foster. The Californian legend has also created songs specifically for motion pictures, including Here for the Kevin Spacey film Shrink, and Somebody's Baby, Jackson's highest charting song for the 1982 comedy Fast Times at Richmond High. Number two, the original Running on Empty recording has never been repeated. In an interview, Jackson Brown stated that he's never been able to properly replicate the original recording of his 1977 hit, Running on Empty. No matter the countless times since the album's release, almost four decades ago, Jackson has played it, they have never been able to successfully replicate to the original. Recorded on the road during the Pretender tour, Running on Empty was a live album which expertly documents the trials and tribulations of touring, and is highly regarded as one of the best live albums around. Luckily for the fans at the Merriweather Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland, back in August 77, they were the only ones to hear this version live. And number one, he has three albums in Rolling Stone's Top 500 Ever. Not only has Jackson Brown's latest offering been noticed and praised by Rolling Stone magazine, three of his 14 studio albums have made their list of the Top 500 Albums of All Time. For every man, Late for the Sky and The Pretender all made the list, highlighting the unbelievable talent of the singer-songwriter. When you consider the arduous task of choosing the 500 greatest albums of all time with some of the most amazing music available, this truly shows how highly regarded Jackson Brown is. To learn more about his tour and to see the dates, head over to manthoughts.co.uk and read our blog. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and also comment below with your favourite Jackson Brown albums, songs or facts. Until next time, I've been Ash Robertson, and this is Man Thoughts.